one of Tessie's nine children, who began this project in 2009. She created this book that takes us on an intimate journey through the captivating stories of Tessie's life and career. This one-of-a-kind story can only be told from the lens and from the heart of a family member who opens up the door to their lives to reveal details out of love, respect, and honor, thus giving us a glimpse of the woman behind the movies and a very relatable peek into a mother-daughter and a parent-child, for all the sons here, relationship that I'm sure we can all relate to. Let's take a short look at what that relationship looks like today. A day and a half. A day in the life of Jesse and Yana. Magandang umaga, Mama! Hi, Mama! How are you today? Galingan tulong mo? Oh, good. You ready to get up for the day? Five minutes. Five minutes? How about now? Not yet? Okay. One of my favorite things is spending time with my grandchildren. They call me Mama Jessie. <laughs> Superstar who single handedly, handedly rebuilt Sapayita Pictures after it was reduced to ashes in a 1950 fire that raised the whole studio, its equipment, including hundreds of film prints. But in 1951, there was an inspired decision to do the film Roberta that starred the pretty and sassy child of actress Linda Strelia. 
It wasn't hard to convince her parents to allow her to do the movie because my maternal grandfather, Jose Olfindo Vera, and Manay Tesis Lola, Lola Kikay Vera Rigotti, were siblings. When the film was shown, Tessie Agana became an instant child superstar. Roberta did not only become the highest grossing Philippine film for many years, it also ushered the return of Sampaguita Pictures to its former glory as the country's premier filmmaking company. For this reason, I'm very happy and pleased that on this very ground, where Sampaguita Pictures once stood, we are now doing the Philippine launching of the book, The Legend of Desi Agana. It is rare for a daughter to be able to put into a poignant prose the travails and triumphs of her mother. It is rarer still for a mother to be able to view her entire life through the prism of her beloved daughter, Mylene Agana Howe Richardson. This book is a brave memoir made more remarkable by the fact that it was penned by Manay Tessie's daughter, who explored her life and times, working as a child superstar and succeeding over a lifetime of unresolved emotions. To Manay Tessie and her family, and to the book author, the inimitable Mylene Agana Howe Richardson, congratulations and mabuhay. Here we go. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Thank you all so much for your support and for being here today. Um, originally, I was going to say this entire speech in Tagalog. And did somebody say no? <laughs> and when I was practicing this with my mama at home in the States, she said, Iha, my ears are hurting me after she was listening to my Tagalog. So I will primarily do this in, in English now. I'll spare you all the details about the, the, the Tagalog. Two years ago, I was standing in this very room, and my family, along with my mama Tessie, and uh, we traveled to the Philippines because my mom received the Lifetime Achievement Award, thank you, mamas, uh, in the 70th, the 70th Award Ceremony for um, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award there. That evening, we arrived, our lovely Vera Perez family, they graciously hosted a beautiful welcome reception right in this very room, actually, the stage was right here. And the atmosphere was vibrant, it was full of so much love and music and singing and food, laughing, but that evening became even more important to me. And unfortunately, my Uncle Kokoy is not here, he is, um, just hurt himself a couple of hours ago, but this young gentleman right here, if you can see, is he's known as the most handsome Vera Perez uh, brother. He's also the only living Vera Perez brother. My uncle Cocoy, the youngest of Doc Perez, Lola Pingut, the star maker of Sampaguita Pictures, and Mama Nene, Vera Perez. And he pointed out an original office wall from Lola Pingo, Pingut standing out like a majestic statue, which impacted me with a powerful force of emotions. All the legendary movies Lola Pingo and San Piquita produced was done right here with, and Old Tito Pente was there as well. And the wall is actually standing right over there. So that's the original office wall of Lola, of Lola Pingo. Sorry, these are... Um, if these walls could talk, my goodness, if these walls could talk, I envision Lola Pingon speaking to my grandmother and uh, Consuelo Agana, whose screen name, as Auntie Gina said, was Linda Australia, encouraging her and my grandfather to place my mom in a small part as a ballet dancer at just the age of six years old. I imagine just the distinct aroma of Max's fried chicken billowing in the air as Lola Pingon would give mama as it was her favorite cuisine, and still is to this day, is, is, is fried chicken, during her snack breaks while filming. <laughs> All go on with your day. I leave you with what my mama Tessie has taught me. She taught me empathy, one voice at a time, one story at a time. Because with my mama Tessie, I always embrace the now. Thank you.
you so much, my name is So a Filipino classic book written by Mars Ravalo, cast an unknown name, child actress Tessia Gana. Roberta became a blockbuster hit overnight, and my mom was credited as the child actress who gave Sampaguita the miracle to not only survive the catastrophe, but also come back bigger and stronger. Eventually, Tessie, with her charm and charisma, and approximately 20 movies as a starring role, became known as the Shirley Temple of the Philippines. She was also deemed as a one-take, uh, take one actress. So the other actors, I forgot to mention, so the other actors, the take one actress was, so the other actors needed to be ready because the directors would say, you have to be ready because you only need one take. So Roberta debuted Sapiquita's gala premiere extravaganza at Life Theater, and that mirrored the Hollywood events complete with red carpet and parade. And I thought I would want, I wanted to show this slide if you can see this, this um, ad of Roberta, and you can see it was from Manila Times dated February 27, 1951, and so the grand gala premiere was on February 28, so almost exactly to this date, 73 years ago. But what I thought was so interesting is that it says here in red, the gala premiere is made possible through the cooperation of, I'm not gonna say all of these because I probably will uh, ruin it, but a lot of the actors of Sabagita, LVN, Premier, Royal, as an expression of their sympathy for the loss Sampaguita pictures suffered in the big fire recently. I thought that was amazing that the Scala premiere was being uh, conducted and they even had, um, they were even, ex even expressing their sympathy to Sampaguita pictures. So it's just showing so much support and I, you know, you would hope to see that more nowadays as well. Imagine big corporations doing that now. Um, and then just another ad I wanted to show here for Roberta is that it was just so cute because at the at this ad it says free candy bars, free candy bars for the first 200 children every day during the regular run. I thought that was so cute. So when I told Mama Tessie about that, she wanted to give you all a treat. And Mama Tessie's favorite candy bar is Kit Kats. So the team here from Bookshelf is giving everybody some Kit Kats right now. So thank you, Bookshelf, for distributing that. That's from Mama Tessie. So kind of resembling her uh, premiere event from the event as well. And they are distributing the Kit Kats. Um, uh, just a, a fun fact. You'll notice a lot of my family and team members are wearing, you see the theme is all purple. If you're wondering why purple, that is, again, a nod to my mom. My mom's favorite color of all time, her entire life was always purple. So that's why the purple theme everywhere. Um, oh, and then also, you see uh, the book, there's a purple bow. So the, the uh, owner of the lady that created my dress, they created a nice little purple bow as well. So a nod, another nod to Mama Tessie. So thank you for that little detail. That was a surprise to me. I didn't even know they were doing that. So I thought that was so cute. Um, while I was writing this book, my mom had a stroke in 2017. And following, she developed dementia. It was crucial then for me to record every single detail and cherish her stories. I had a million goals throughout this journey, and I wasn't sure I would ever complete the book and see the physical copy with my mom. So I ended up reading every single chapter to her uh, from the Word document. So there are still, she would laugh, and she would cry, and she would tell me a few times, oh, Iha, you cannot write that. So there's still some secrets in our family vault that may or may not be ever uh, written because mama said no. But when we received the physical copy from the printer, she looked at this book, and again, she has dementia. She looked at the book and she recognized herself right away. She hugged the book and she said, this is me, this is me. And so she, would, she and I just both started crying. It was not a moment for social media. 
It wasn't even a moment that I posted with my family. It was just our special moment. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a beautiful moment when I was able to finally give her the physical copy of the book. I started on this journey researching and realized that in the word research, it was the search that was integral. I was searching in the life of my mom and my grandmother, and it allowed me to know more about myself and my family and broke lifelong barriers that brought both my mama and I so much closer. Her stories brought me on this unprecedented journey that I never could have imagined. A thought after seeing what I believe was a majestic wall bought, brought me, my oldest sister Marita here, my brother Junjun here, across the world to be with all of you. Um, Crazy, the